Shalom once again, and thanks so much for joining us uh, for this uh, new teaching on Jesus, actually. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at Jesus and his Palm Sunday event that uh, was recorded in the Gospels, of course. And we're going to talk uh, again about God's sovereignty and his care, as this event, I think, uh, highly demonstrates uh, how God, not only in the past, but will in the future, uh, really have the last word. So I hope that if you like this channel, that you'll like this video, and more importantly, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell as well if you want to keep track of uh, future teachings that we offer. So let's get started with going to the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives today is really a location where God's sovereignty can be appreciated both in the past as well as in the future. The Mount of Olives being in Jerusalem as a part of the land of Israel, which is really just a small portion of the entire world. So our story takes us once again to Jerusalem, right there in the heart of the hill country of Judah. And our story involves Jesus and the Palm Sunday event from Luke 19. However, we're also going to look at a story that will remind us of what yet is coming as we celebrate God's sovereignty as unfolding in Zechariah 14. So there is Jerusalem. It's in the hill country of Judah, about 3,000 feet in elevation. When we zoom into Jerusalem... We see the old city coming into view now. With the Mount of Olives here to the east. Our view of the Temple Mount from the Mount of Olives is this. This is the standard, most traditional view of Jerusalem. And we can see a lot here, including the Dome of the Rock that was built in 692. 2 AD, the Holy Sepulchre Church behind it, built in 325 AD. But from the eastern wall of the old city, looking back eastward, here is the Mount of Olives, just like Psalm 125 tells us, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. So our story here involves the Mount of Olives. You can see the Mount of Olives, at least the cemetery on the western slope of the Mount of Olives, here to the left of the Kidron Valley, which is east of the Temple Mount itself, where you can see the Dome of the Rock, where both the first and second temples once were located. Now this view of the Temple Mount and the old city is spectacular. We can see a lot from this vantage point as we take a look at the eastern wall and the eastern gate and here the southern end of the Temple Mount and the steps that would have been used by Jesus and others on the south side. But this Mount of Olives range now is completely filled with a cemetery, a Jewish cemetery. Literally tens of thousands of Jews are buried here. The stones represent people visiting their graves and, of course, in a Jewish tradition, you leave a stone in honor of the person who died. Now, when we go back to the days of Jesus, and this is our main interest today, this is what Jerusalem looked like. Thanks to archaeology illustrated for this particular model of Jerusalem, again, the Temple Mount, 
which means the temple right in the middle on this mount or platform expanded by Herod the Great when he built the temple beginning in 20 BC. So this is our focus, our view of the temple from the Mount of Olives, and of course the other part of the city, the northern part, the western part, and the southern part of the city, all enclosed with a wall. Now the temple courts would have been seen from the Mount of Olives, as Jesus would have, and every other pilgrim would have uh, seen this from the top of the mountain. Temple Mount itself, the Holy Chamber, about 125 feet high or so, the Court of the Women, Court of the Israelites, Court of the Gentiles on both sides. Uh, we'll talk in other continuing teachings about the Temple and Jesus' activity here. But Jesus, after the Palm Sunday encounter, spent every day maybe not Wednesday of his Passion Week, but in and around the temple courts, including the Court of the Women. These are the 15 Levitical steps and the Court of the Priests behind these doors. But our primary purpose is to consider Jesus and his kingship as he would have descended down perhaps even near this pathway where we walk today down the western slope of the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem. Now back 2,000 years, Jesus was heralded as the king, riding on a donkey in fulfillment of Zechariah chapter 9. Palm branches were used to hail him as the king. In fact, when we read this story about kingship from Luke 19. This is what we read. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell him, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead, and then they found it as just as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought it to Jesus. They threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Now Matthew's version of the Palm Sunday event reads this way. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. And they took the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and sat. And Jesus sat on them. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowd that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. 
Now, why the palm branches? Well, back in the days of John Hyrcanus the first, who reigned from 135 to 104 BC, the palm branch was a sign of liberation. And they were minted on the coins during his reign. Here's one example, and yet here's another example. You see, the crowd honored Jesus as king, even though he was riding humbly on a donkey in fulfillment of the words of Zechariah the prophet. Jesus still was recognized as the king. And as Jesus went further down the slope of the Mount of Olives, this would have been Sunday, just Thursday, a few days later, Jesus would agonize in the Garden of Gethsemane. You see, this whole Passion Week was about not necessarily just displaying his kingship, but to fulfill God's redemptive plan, his plan for the world. So on Thursday night, Jesus, after being in the temple most of that week, was betrayed by Judas. He prayed earnestly as he faced the temple mount. And yet he prayed, not my will, but yours be done. Friday, Jesus was crucified. And yet Sunday, he rose again. Now, when we talk about Jesus' kingship as certainly seen not only in the event of Palm Sunday, but now when we take a look at what will happen on the Mount of Olives, as again we look from the west to the east, there's the corner of the Temple Mount. Here is the Kidron Valley between the Temple Mount and the Mount of Olives. Today the Mount of Olives is marked by these three prominent towers. And yet when we read from Zechariah 14, keep this in mind as we talk about the day of the Lord that is coming. Zechariah writes, when you, your plunder will be divided among you. I will gather all the nations to Jerusalem to fight against it. The city will be captured, the houses ransacked, and the women raped. Half of the city will go into exile, but the rest of the people will not be taken from the city. Then the Lord will go out and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. On that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a great valley with half of the mountain moving north and half moving south. You will flee by my mountain valley, for it will extend to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. Then the Lord, my God, will come and all the holy ones with him. On that day there will be no light nor uh, no cold or frost. It will be a unique day without daytime or nighttime, a day known to the Lord. When evening comes, there will be light. On that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half to the eastern sea and half to the western sea, in summer and in winter. The Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day there will be one Lord and his name the only name. Two thousand years ago Jesus rode in humbly on a donkey as the king. One day Jesus is going to return and when he returns he'll stand on the Mount of Olives. Half of this mountain after being split into two will move to the north, half of it moving to the south. And once again, water will flow, but this time all the way down to the Dead Sea to the east, and this water flowing all the way to the Mediterranean to the west. 
This is what Zechariah envisioned. And the Dead Sea will become fresh water. This is a great example of Jesus and his sovereignty and yet his care for the world as he fulfills God's redemptive plan as king. Jesus came as king once. He's coming again as king. And the whole world will know that God reigns above. So as Jesus came once to be our Savior, he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, heralded as the King. He died as our Savior. He rose again victorious, and yet he's coming again a second time when he will stand, as Zechariah tells us, on the Mount of Olives. I hope that you're trusting in him as your Savior, and certainly I hope that in the midst of the uncertainties of life, that you are also depending on God's sovereignty and care to be extended to you. He knows exactly what you're facing today, and uh, he wants us to keep in mind that as Jesus himself was heralded as king, uh, God is certainly still on the throne overseeing our affairs as well. So I hope that you enjoy this teaching. Again, till next time, uh, shalom. Thanks for joining us.